This is episode 22 of the Florida Sound Archive podcast. I'm Jeff Kaiser. My guest for November 2021 is best known for downtown West Palm Beach bar and live music venue that also bared his name, Rage Downtown Blues, Ray Carbone. Ray, welcome on in. How are you? Hi, Jeff. How you doing, buddy? I am doing fantastic. It is so wonderful to have you on today with me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Good. It's really, really wonderful to have you because, you know, when I think about a lot of the clubs and venues from when I was growing up and that I had a chance to go to, Ray's was one of the ones that I was at quite frequently. So it's so nice to have on the person who was responsible for Ray's Downtown Blues. Yeah, I think sometimes it's more infamous than famous, but yes, definitely. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of bad things, a lot of good things. I had a great time doing it, though, and I wouldn't have done it any other way. I definitely wanted to bring blues and jazz to West Palm Beach, and then I realized that that was not going to work. And that's when I started getting into the punk rock, and, well, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> sure. A lot of transitions over the years for Ray's and, you know, kind of thinking back, you know, for you, you know, obviously you didn't just grow up one day and say, or maybe you did, Hey, I wanted to put on shows and promote live music and that sort of thing. So talk about some of the early years for you. Like how does one, you know, how did you get in, involved in uh, putting on shows and when did that come about for you? Well, um, I grew up in uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey, so I was right across the bridge from Manhattan. And um, my brother was, and sister are both older than me. And my dad was an ex-cop, uh, Italian uh, descent, Hoboken, New Jersey, tough growing up. Uh, it was where I was born. And I guess my brother took me to, I guess my brother gave me uh, his vinyl record collection, which was probably about, a hundred albums at the time. And it was mostly like Rolling Stones, Zeppelin, stuff like that. And he asked me if I wanted to go to see Ze Zeppelin. And then he took me to see the Ramones on the same night at CBGB. Oh, nice. Very nice. And wow. I, think that, I think that probably did it. I remember reading, you know, all the liner notes on the albums and who's McKinley Morganfield and who's Riley King. And it ends up being BB King or Muddy Waters or whatever. And I, just was, you know, into art in school and sports, of course, baseball. And I don't know, I guess it just all fell into line. And then I, I moved down here with my family, like right after I graduated from high school in 1979. Yeah, I'm 60 years old, but, but by the way, okay. kind of a vampire, I guess, you know, the, I age. Good, well. Ray. You look good, away. my friend. You look good. Thank you. And uh, I wasn't looking for compliments, but thank you. And uh, yes, I guess it just like, there wasn't anything down here, you know? It was like, I moved to Wellington in 1979. Wow. There were dirt roads and stuff. And it was a, such sure. a cold spot for me. And then I found a club that was called the Kiki Lounge. And I'll never forget it. I, it was uh, like a band called Truke of America. I don't know if you ever- Oh yeah, they were from Palm yeah. Beach. They were like- yeah, punk and and uh, comedy kind of stuff, you know, like right. Weird Al. And that was it. And I was like, I want to do this. And then I got into, you know, I was in real estate and I got into, um... hi, Ted. See Ted? Hey there, Ted. <laughs> yeah, he's a very good dog, but he likes to be, when I'm talking, he thinks I'm talking to him all the time. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I got, I got into... DJing, I guess. My mm. wife was the manager of the Rolling Stones' niece or through marriage or something. Uh, Alan Klein, manager of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, actually. And I got into music and uh, started going to Respectables and meeting Rodney. We we're both about the same age and we would DJ and talk about punk rock he was more into like uh joy division and all that stuff oh all, nice alternative stuff and one day he looked at me he's like hey you want you you really want to do this blues club thing and i'm like yeah i think i do and he's like well that building's for sale what do you think and that was it 
And where Ray's is, was is now Kapow and Hullabaloo. And I mean, I did it for almost 15 years. I think it was a good run. Sure. I don't think that, um, yeah. I mean, I can remember the first punk rock band that I booked. Do you remember a band called The Worms? The Worms, no. Mm -mm. Okay, you're gonna laugh. You know who the, the bass player is? Oscar Isaac, Oscar Hernandez, the actor. Wow. He was like 18, 19 years old and playing in a band called The Worms. And that was the, and if you go on YouTube, you can yeah. actually find about an hour of it recorded. That's great. And I guess it was like, I didn't really want to do it because I did, I, I like punk rock. I don't like the hardcore screamo, but you know what? I get it. And I think that bringing that to people meant something to, to them. I mean, I still get today, look, it's what, 13 years, almost as long as I was open it's since I've closed. I closed in 07, so that's 14 years, 08, 13 years. More people come up to me and say, you know, you actually changed my life. You gave me something to do. And I, and I think you're one of those people too, right? I mean, absolutely. So yeah. you would come, come up and go yeah. to a show. I would come up from Coral Springs and go to shows up there. And when you think about it, though, Ray, you think about Palm Beach at that time, mid, late 90s, early 2000s, there really weren't. I mean, unless I was blind to it, there weren't, really weren't many venues where you could see a local hardcore punk show up in Palm Beach. Spanky's across the street mm -hmm. from me. Right. Respectables, now Respectables is doing more punk shows, I think, than they ever did before. Yeah. Rodney never wanted to go that way either, but, you know, now they do. And, and me, yeah. I, I remember there was a club called uh, Foundation. Do you remember that? No. Mm -mm. It was on Southern Boulevard, like Congress and Southern, I think. And it was, they did some, I think Rancid played there, actually. Okay. And that's, you know, I saw that and I was like, well, maybe. The, the thing I was always worried about is like what we're experiencing now with that show in Houston. Like, I, I don't think that's a mosh pit. What I had was a mosh pit. And there were nights when, and I still get people say to me all the time, you hit me with a mag light. I go, yeah, I poked you in the ribs to get you in out of the way so that we had a, a way to walk, God forbid, if something happened. Sure. Like a fire. And, and, you know, I mean, I think that it's a dying, I, I don't know. I mean, I went to a show last night and just walked into to propaganda and it was a hardcore show and there was a mosh pit going on and I kind of remembered why I didn't like it. But I also <laughs> love the music, the music for me, not the screaming. Right. But like the, the double kick drum thing and the dual guitar with the one, one has the fuzz on it and the other one's clean. Yeah, all that. And then me doing the sound, that brought back like a lot of memories. I bet. And I was talking to the owner, Matt, and he's like, you want to do sound tonight? I go, absolutely not. No, I do not want to do that. <laughs> I'll let you, I'll tell you what's wrong, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? If there are a lot of places around that just don't do it anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and if there are, I think it's just, and you know, I hate to be one of those people that say, well, you know, it's a, it has changed, you know, with things obviously evolve over the course of time and, 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 and what have you. But, uh, but I think that was a special period at that time, you know, being so many, you know, cause again, Palm beach was kind of a growing area. Right. I think, I think for years like Miami and then Fort Lauderdale and oh, Dade Broward then slowly came up to, you know, the Palm beach area. Now I think in, in a way Palm beach is kind of the more, hip of the of the three but maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong i don't know what what about you what do you think yeah there was another there was a club in boynton i can't remember the name of it now that, that it was a large venue and they and they did some punk rock stuff um mm -hmm. i mean i i go to new orleans a lot there's one club left that does wow. or maybe two that does anything re re resembling punk rock or hardcore mm -hmm. um up there, it's more obviously, you know, funk and all the New Orleans jazz stuff, which is really what I got into. I mean, that yeah. was what, when I decided I wanted to do 
that, I was like, I want to, I want to bring that. And it did. It worked for a while. And I was doing rocks. I mean, I did Led Zeppelin cover bands. And I had, do you want to go through some of the bands that I had? Yeah, Buddy let's do it. Miles, Buddy Miles from Jimi Hendrix's band. Uh, Tedeschi, uh, Susan Tedeschi and, and Derek Trucks, Allman Brothers. I mean, that stuff, that, and Jimmy Vaughn and, well, let me walk around a little bit and see something. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, so how do I do this? You can see it that way, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look at that good looking guy. I see that. Guy. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and that was like, there's an article. That was when I first opened. I think that's before the nose job, if you see that there. <laughs> was that 95 when you first opened? 95 was when you first opened, right? Uh, yeah, 94. I think. Or 94. And then this is like, these were on the stage at the bar. I, I painted these. Oh, wow. See yeah. Okay. And then, all right. So don't look at the dirty clothes. Promise. But this me. is, this is some of the bands that played at Ray's. Um, Room for the Great. Blues. <sighs> look at that. Mike Watt. Now there's a story. You know who he is. He's of course. Now, yeah, we, what was the Minutemen, right? From the Minutemen, yeah. Yeah. Proclaimers, I still can't listen to 500 Miles every time I hear it. I get upset because they, I think they played that song five times that night. <laughs> you and have right you after 9 11 and I ate it really hard. <laughs> so let, let's talk about, I mean, great. what do you, what do you remember seeing when you, when you went there? That, that yeah. this is what the stories I like to hear when people sure. tell me, Oh, I, so my girlfriend, who's a lot younger than me, she said, I saw um, uh, Acacia Strain or Evergreen Terrace. Do you remember that stuff? Yeah, I, I don't think I, that was probably more maybe mid 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, maybe like 05. Yeah, sounds about right. So some of the, my, some of the ones that I remember fondly, uh, I saw the band MU330. The punk ska okay, band. yes. Ska band. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. Uh, they played with, uh, I think they played with... Uh, Mustard Plug? No, they they weren't with Mustard Plug. They were with, I think, two other bands from Florida, I think. That oh, one of the, one of the um, Less Than Jake uh, offshoot bands. For some reason, what's coming to me is it was quite a quite a while ago. Was the Go to Hell's and Gigolo and the Barflies? I think those are the two. Oh, okay. that them. So Ed from Gigolo Big and I are still good friends. We still talk, and every once in a while he'll be like, "Do you remember this and that?" I'm like, "Oh my God, yes, <laughs> yeah." That's great. He had some great shows. Um, yeah, but I remember like some of the stuff that I never thought I would like. I ended up liking like. You know, don't talk me, you know, degrading <laughs> on this, but Dashboard Confessional. Okay. I mean, uh, Cartel, um, Day to Remember. I mean, Day to Remember probably played at Rays 15 times. And look at what they are now. I mean, it's just like ridiculously. Yeah. And just, just really speaking, speaking about Dashboard Confessional, the fact that, you know, you know, Chris Caraba from South Florida, you know, right. did he play there like earlier on, like before? I'm pretty sure they did, but he played before. Uh, what was his band? Um, Further Seems Forever? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played there with them. Yep. And then he, uh, the one night I will never forget, there must have been 250, 300 13 year old girls. And, and, you know, and he decided that he didn't want me to mic everything. And he decided that he just wanted to play. So he sat on the floor and it was like a kumbaya meeting, you know, like that everyone's getting to, and they're all singing. And I'm looking at, I'm like, this is nuts. This is really crazy. And then later seeing him at like Coral Sky Amphitheater or whatever, right. In front sure. of twenty thousand people, I'm like, holy crap! Hey, you know, yeah, that was you know that sort of stuff. Um, Paramore, a, another one. They played literally like 
were not happy with my sound system. So they said, we're just going to play acoustically. We don't care. Okay. If that's what you want. Mm. Um, God, yeah. Triple A. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, great show. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. There's a lot. Even, go ahead. You tell me. What else did you remember seeing? Yeah, so another one of my favorites was the band Slick Shoes. Uh, I saw them play there with, uh, I think it was them and another band called Cooter, who I think they changed their name later on to something else. But uh, that was a really fun show. What genre of music was that? Also ska? Punk. No, punk, like skate punk. Right. Uh, And then I saw also more on, on the hardcore side, uh, I believe it was uh, One King Down, uh, Where Fear and Weapons Meet, played that, played that one, too. I remember that. That was a pretty brutal show. In terms of- <laughs> Do you remember yeah. the Christmas party shows? Uh, Some of the Christmas shows? Uh, oh, my God. I don't God. know if I ever made one of those. I, they like, oh, the confetti. They just, like, did confetti bombs throughout the whole club. Oh, nice. And- Oh, I was not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tone down, tone down the cursing, but I definitely went crazy on that one. I'm like, you're going to clean up all this stuff. So who was that too? Like, is that, was that to the people that were there? Or was that to staff? Like, who would you direct that? Uh, well, trip? So what would happen a lot mm. was promoters would come to me and say, hey, you, you know, you probably don't know who this is, but they're pretty big right now. We're going to promote this show. So they would take the door and honestly, it got to the point where, well, you know, the city and I were not seeing eye to eye because they didn't like punk rock Mm. and they didn't understand what, why all these kids were hanging out there. So they decided to change the law on capacity and it was either I pay what I call extortion fees, but you know, you pay a, a fee so much to have extra police protection. Like they were there anyway. I don't understand. And they would say to you, okay, uh, now you can do the show, but your, your capacity has to be down or whatever. So I changed things. And that's what I did. I <clears throat> literally like, okay, uh, I'll do 250 people. And then it, when I blew capacity a couple times, I got in trouble. Like literally zip tied, walked down to the police station. In wow. Trouble. Oh yeah. They actually put you in jail for that? Uh, it, it wasn't very long. It was probably about <clears throat> a half an hour. But yeah, and I told my bartender just, you know, but we would put the liquor away. So kids, there was actually, I thought it was actually a pretty safe environment. Mm. Yes, I think some people, you know, there may have been a couple of black eyes and uh, broken arm, broken, you know, fingers or whatever and mosh pit. But nobody, I, I, I guess a couple of people may have passed out from it being too hot. Mm. You know, South Florida in, in August, the 10 ton air condition is not going to keep up with that. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I guess that, mm. you know, I, I gave him a pretty safe environment. I thought, right. Yeah. I mean, you never felt. Yeah. That. Yeah. I never felt at all in danger, you know, when I was there. So uh, we had a couple of bouncers that were, you know, friends of mine, more or less that would like stand at the door or stay by the stage and make sure, but I was more concerned about, my ten thousand dollars worth of sound equipment falling on somebody's head mm. because that happened a lot i mean the, the, the speakers even though they were chained to the ceiling they could fall on you especially if you get that many kids stage diving right and that happened yeah what was the worst injury you ever you ever witnessed there a uh, broken arm broken mm. uh a broken jaw mm. um I got hit on the head with an ashtray one time. That's Jeez. me up pretty good. It was, I was my fault. I had these ashtrays on the bar because I smoked cigars. Yeah. So there were marble ashtrays and some kid got pissed at me and decided that it would be funny to see what happened if I hit Ray in the head. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> was that, was this? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> well, broken windows. Okay. A couple times, five or six times. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I thought that was kind of par for the course. I'm assuming this was at a punk and hardcore show, not a blues show. Yeah, you know, the blues people don't normally get that riled up. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. I mean, we, it, we actually, when I first started, we had tables and chairs and we, we had a, 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 like a guy that had a fruit truck, but he did it in the bar and we had like gumbo and, and uh, ribs and stuff. And I, it worked for a while and then all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. Mm. But I, I, I think that was kind of like the awakening for me. I was like, okay, you got to bend. You, you, you may not like this, but to go on that long. And yeah, I took on some partners. I, I mean, uh, silent partners mostly, but I think that, um, like I said, I go to Memphis, I go to Nashville, I go to uh, New Orleans, and I see bands like Lucero is one of my favorite bands mm. of all. They are, I guess they started in 99 as a punk rock. I guess like, a, but punk rock, Ramones, Bruce Springsteen kind of punk rock, yeah. if that makes any sense. And then they got horns, and then they got horns. And now I see them, I see Ben, the lead singer, and he really, God, God damn it, Ray, you, you like, you chased me all around. I go, dude, I love you guys. Mm. You guys played at Ray's twice. He goes, yeah, I remember 2001. They played with um, Drive-By Truckers. Remember that band? Yeah. What, what do you even call that? Cunt, alt country? Yeah, I guess that's more like on the uh, all country Americana kind of kind of sound, I guess. Yeah. All country, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I see the records behind you. What do you got back there? So behind me here, uh, most of this is jazz and soundtracks. And I think the bottom row is probably more like soul funk kind of stuff right. over on this side here. So, uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Been, you know, it pretty much goes all the way down that side across on the other side. But everything is organized by... Uh, by genre so you have to have some kind of organization i assume you have some in your collection as well that's my guy there you Long, go i mean this is in this is an old um i guess record cabinet whatever you know I still yeah, have. yeah yeah but like little willie john dude nice uh, there we go even even disco look at this studio 54 Okay. Is that, <laughs> is that something that you grew up listening to and you just uh, oh, yeah, feel, you feel nostalgic with? From Hoboken, Fort Lee, New Jersey, you're across the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Geez. Oh, my God. Saturday Night Fever. But we had radio stations, you know, and that's another thing. Right. When I had Rays, I had a couple radio stations that would cross promote with me and I would go on and they would be like, you know, go down to Lauderdale or up to Stewart or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and that, where do you listen to punk rock? You can't listen to it unless you have it on vinyl or CD. Is there a radio station? I know in New Orleans, there's one. WWOZ does punk on the weekends. But, mm -hmm. um, but who else? Yeah. It's a good, it's a good question. I don't even know, dude. Not Yeah, not just straight punk radio. I mean, I remember back... Back in the day in, you know, South Florida, you know, there was uh, there was always the buzz that would play more like on the pop punk side of things. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What, so you got the what's the other one now? The shark or whatever? Yeah, the shark. Uh, the shark always kind of remind me more of like a like a big 105 to me. Um, but uh, going further south. Uh, you know, I guess you get more into the college radio, more of the, like, I know there was WFMU in Miami. Uh, yeah. There was 88.5 KPX in Broward. And Dar did the blues thing. Uh, and, you know, we did blues festivals down in Fort Lauderdale too. That mm. were pretty big. I mean, we had some, you know, Etta James and big, big name people down there. And I definitely, you know, promoted that with, I had a stage and so did uh, my other buddy Kilmo from Alligator Alley. I think you know him. Oh yeah, yeah, Kilmo. Yeah, Kilmo, like Kilmo, he's yeah. still he's back doing it again, mm -hmm. uh, which I find unbelievably crazy. But you know, and, and punk rock uh, uh, bands like Mary Tyler Horrors. Remember that band? Yeah, they were great yeah. punk rock, funny. They were, yeah. Um, there's some other bands that I mean, I I don't even. Oh, who did I see recently? Um, 
you know, it's getting old. It's... Sure. There's so many, you know, it's hard to. Um, okay. Derek from Sleigh Bells was in was, a band. Yeah. Uh, po uh, Poison the Well? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And used to play at Rays like almost every yeah. week. Yeah. 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 And he's. Actually, I never saw them at Rays, though. I, I always saw them in Fort Lauderdale or Miami. I think the last time I saw him was around Christmas time. He literally told me that he was opening, you know, he was playing for 20,000 people at the Brooklyn, whatever that is up there, amphitheater where the Nets play or whatever. I'm like, dude, 20,000 people, Ray, it's because of people like you. You gave us that opportunity. You know, you were like our crazy uncle, you know, that did stuff that, <laughs> no, that nobody else would think of. You did it. <laughs> Yeah. And that's something so special considering, you know, a lot of bands may have gotten their start, you know, one of their first actual legit venues to play could have been raised. So what other stories do you have like that where people have come up to you later on years later and have said, you know, thank you for allowing us to uh, have that. Well, that, you know, the, that the Derek, they were on uh, actually Anthony Bourdain before you know he passed away and sure. they they were doing they, they did some kind of barbecue thing and he said you know where did you you know where'd you get your start and he said oh, i used to play this place west palm beach raised downtown blues um like i said one of the first bands i ever did punk rock bands i ever did was a band called the worms and oscar isaac is an actor who i guess is star wars is his biggest role i guess now but Oscar is an 18 year old kid and I'm watching TV one night and Jimmy Kimmel and he's like playing acoustic. He's like, Oh, where'd you play? Or what do you know? Oh, I lived in Miami, but I lived in West Palm for a while. I used to play Ray's downtown blues. I literally like spit my coffee out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. Uh, what was that other band? Um, God, Cassidy Pope, right? Um, mm -hmm. she was on the voice. She was one of the first winners of okay. the voice. That that band was called Hello Monday. Yes, not familiar. Pop punk, pop punk kind of band. Okay. Paramore, they played there. You know, they they probably hated it because the sound system wasn't up to their liking. Uh, oh, okay. Here's a good story. So I get a call from John from the Buzz. He's the the production manager, and he's like, "Hey." Um, do you know, uh, I got a band that, that, that's supposed to play at Coral Sky, but it, they double booked a date or something and, and we need a place to play. What do you think like on a Monday night? I go, nothing goes on a Monday. Who is it? Offspring. Mm. And Offspring packed the room and it was nuts. Literally, wow. I will not forget the trucks coming down the middle of Clematis Street at eight o'clock in the morning and the police yelling at me because they literally blocked off the street to unload their channel, uh, 300 channel board and take all my equipment out and put their equipment in. Uh, Tom Morello, Rage Against Machine, played at Rage, acoustic. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Interesting. Now, these shows that you're speaking of, you know, Offspring, Tom Morello, what have you, did these shows sell out? Like, did, did you have to actually turn people away or? Oh, yeah. I think that the, the one with the buzz was that you called up and you had to say whatever their password was and you got two tickets. Mm. Uh, people came to the door and they were trying to get in. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, like I said, I mean, I had there was a couple shows. Cartel was on MTV for a while. Right. They had some kind of a show and there were at least three or four kids that passed out from heat exhaustion because there were just too it was too much just too yeah. many people and then i had to like all the opening bands i had to get them out like okay you guys gotta go out the back door oh yeah you know didn't i mean the venue you gotta remember the venue wasn't it probably looked big to some no, people. It wasn't big. <laughs> it was, it was small. less than 4,000 square feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, a restaurant now. And when I walked through it, I left because I can't, I can't believe that I pulled that off. Yeah. I, I had a camcorder later on. So actually, I do have video of the uh, 
MV330 and the Slick Shoes show. And it, I haven't watched it in years, but I, the last time I watched it, that was the first thing I thought. I was like, man, I, I don't remember Ray's being so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could tell you at the end of the night, cleaning up and didn't feel small, but you, you know, mm -hmm. they, it's a different time. People were allowed to smoke in venues and stuff. I think that oh, yeah. was my biggest thing with sweeping up cigarette butts. Yeah, I remember that. Didn't, <laughs> didn't Dave Brocky from Guar play there too? Oh, yeah. Any good that stories about good. that show? Because I wasn't at that one. Okay, he came in, yeah, without the makeup and everything. I mean, I already had seen Guar, so I knew who they were. But Dave was funny. So he comes in, he's like, he's got a real raspy voice. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sing tonight, right? I go, I got some sake, dude. You want like some, I'm going <laughs> to microwave you some sake. And let, let's get you some like uh, throat lozenges from Publix. And and we're sitting there and he's like, oh, I feel better. All right, all right, all right, let's go on. We're good. And he was just a really funny guy. And we, we hit on comic books too. That's another thing that I got into was comics. Okay. And Guar, that's I think the first time I actually saw them, they did a they did some kind of a comic book with all their costumes and everything on. It was some comic book convention, I believe it was like, or uh, Atlanta or something like that, Fantasy Fest or whatever it was called. Yeah, um, you know there wasn't any stage blood that night, so that was good. I didn't have to clean up any of that. <laughs> but Guar tends to get a little bloody. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Was there any? Any band or artist that you had there that you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Like, I don't know if I'd want, want you back. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I, I wasn't lucky enough to get Gigi Allen. But, I mean, I had that. There were a couple bands that were in that. I won't name names, but there were a couple bands sure. that did, did some stuff on stage that I wasn't really happy with. Mm. Uh, it, <laughs> I don't think that there was any, I don't think there was any band that I said, okay, unless you're bringing 350 people, I'm never going to book you again. I don't mm. think I have a problem. Uh, That's good. I, I did. I definitely, like I said, I had to bend a little bit. There were things that were not in my realm of music that I thought, but I mean, I had one of my favorite bands was a band called Physical Graffiti. They were a Led Zeppelin mm. cover band. But these guys, like, I mean, Jeff, they looked and sounded exactly like them. And the people just loved them. And I, I think that's cool, too. I was open yeah. to that sort of stuff. I mean, I didn't think that, all right, you know, you, you're talking... Uh, I remember promoting stuff and saying, all right, this is probably not something you're going to like, but some of the ska shows, just amazing stuff, man. Um, what was, the, what was uh, the other band that used to play all the time? Hard Richards? Is that the ska band? Local ska band. Jiggle Big and the Barflies. Yeah. yeah. Um, MU330, I remember that. Mustard Plug. My Mustard Plug played there. Yeah. Uh, dude from um, less, less Than Jake. Uh, dudes from um, Fishbone. A couple of guys from Fishbone. I like. Okay. Uh, I, and uh, not the lead singer, but, you know, guitar sure. players or what. Sure, sure. I don't know, man. I just like, I think it's a dying thing. I mean, what, where else you go to new, I can, like I said, I'm, I'm sure New York city still has punk rock somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There I mean, obviously not CBGB, yeah, where there's... I grew up. Sure. I went to CBGB's as a kid so many times. I should not have been there. How old were you when you were, when you were first there? 16. <laughs> <laughs> That was that 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 was that Ramon show you were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Was Just that the first mind. show you were ever at? Like, pure, like the first concert. I, I, saw I saw Zeppelin that night. Okay. And, okay. and in the Ramones, the, yeah, yeah. You saw, saw Zeppelin the same night you saw the Ramones. Yeah. <laughs> I think that explains everything right there. <laughs> I think it was the that could have been Muddy Waters for all I know. Open for Zeppelin, the probably. Yeah. yeah. Bo Diddley or so Johnny Winter or somebody like that. Um, you know, seeing the Ramones um, definitely changed it for me, dude. 
I bet. A lot. I mean, I knew, I didn't know um, all of them, but I, I knew Joey, we would go down the street and get a slice of pizza. You know, I was 17 years old and he was probably, well, he's 10 years old and he, well, they're all dead now, right? Right. Except for Marky. Marky played at Rays. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Marky played at Rays. Uh, Mike Watt from uh, Minuteman, mm-hmm. like I said, yeah. you know, he played at Rays. Uh, it, it, it was that sort yeah. of stuff. To me, like, my brother gave me uh, all the Zeppelin, all the Ramones, all the Doors, not Ramones, uh, Rolling Stones. Okay. I got into the Ramones. I bought, you know, I can remember going to Bleaker Bob's uh, and, and right down the street from uh, CBGB's and buying first presses of Ramones albums. I mean, I have them all, you know. Okay. And, and that was that, the clash, definitely for me. I saw them at uh, Bonds. Uh, it was like a disco of 1980. I had already wow. moved down here, but I went up to see them. I saw them at Shea Stadium uh, with The Who. Oh, nice. I think, uh, you know, Danzig, uh, you know, Misfits, um, Black Flag, uh, Minor Threat. I, I got to see all that stuff. Wow. And for those for those that are fans of those bands, they're I'm sure we're all salivating right now listening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah. those are I mean those are like the crown jewels of the of of punk. I mean yeah, I, I mean I can remember you know, I was working at Respectables and mm. go uh, we went to see the Cult. Okay. Unbelievable! So what like an amazing show at the at what they what they would used to call what the Leaky Teepee. The uh, the amphitheater that I think is now a Home Depot or something. <laughs> it, 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 unbelievable! We, we yeah. had we had some pretty good shows down here. We were pretty yeah. lucky. Yeah, and yeah. I saw Fugazi. I think I had to go up to Jacksonville to see Fugazi. I was going to ask you that question, you know, considering you know you were li- you were living more in the South Florida area. How frequently were you traveling throughout the state to check out other music? Orlando and 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 Jacksonville because they were punk clubs up there, mm-hmm. um, and sometimes like I would get when once I opened Rays not so much. I mean once I opened the the club I I was basically committed to that six nights a week. Yeah, I mean I would literally had a I had a property management company, real estate, and would work till five o'clock at night and then go to the club and stay and get home at three in the morning and then turn around and go back to work at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. And that should not be done. We should not do that. That definitely, <laughs> that aged me, but <laughs> you know, I, I think that, and that was when I committed to it. And my wife at the time was like, you really want to do this? I'm like, yeah. Cause I, I feel like I have to do this because mm. if I don't, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to be happy with myself. Right. And yeah, you know, yeah. I went to, um, I, I, I was Lauderdale, uh, yeah. Revolution and Culture Room. Mm. You know, those guys, they're still doing that stuff. Not as sure. much, maybe. I mean, I don't think they do. Lucero plays down there. Uh, I don't know of any Morphine. Do you remember that band? Oh, yeah, that Morphine, was, sure. That, I saw it. The Carefree Theater. There you go. If you don't talk about John Stoll and the Carefree Theater and that guy, bless his soul, man. I mean, he went through the same stuff that I did. He's like, I don't know how you do this, man. I go, I don't know how you do what you do. I saw morphine there and then Mark Sandman died right after that. You got to remember, I also managed bands. Uh, Black River Circus was a pretty big band for a while. And, you know, Rob, he passed away really young, 28 years old. Uh, we had twin guitar players. We had bands like Doorway 27 and uh, Box Elder. I guess for sake of a better word, hippie rock or whatever you would call it. I, uh, what was the name of the, oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm brain farts. Um, Crazy Fingers, uh, Grateful Dead cover band every Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did. That was at the care. That was at the Carefree Theater. No, Rays. Oh, Rays. Go, gotcha. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, literally, I had different nights, you know, like, sure. I think Monday was more or less bands uh, wanted to use it as a rehearsal space. So I would just like let them play. Uh, my friend Jason Kay, who's actually played with In Excess, sang with In Excess after Michael Hutchins died, he would play there. Um, and, and Derek, you know, Poison the Well. And and Tuesdays was a Grateful Dead thing that lasted about five years, I guess. Mm. And then mostly, I think the most amazing thing that I, I was proud of, that I would do a punk rock show at five o'clock in the afternoon or evening until 10, what, seven, 10 bands? Six to seven bands, 10 bands, and then put a blues band on afterwards <laughs> until two in the morning. And yeah, a lot of people didn't like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Such what a happened to blues? Uh, well, you didn't support yeah. it, so you had to do other stuff. <laughs> Something that's also kind of remind me that's not blues, of course, but definitely originated from blues was more Southern rock. You mentioned you'd gone to Orlando, Jacksonville. So were you listening to any Southern rock at that time too? You know, Skinner, 38 Special, Blackfoot, Outlaws, that type of stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, it's like when you say to me, <clears throat> what music did you listen to as a kid? Well, I listened to Zeppelin and, and, and Rolling Stones and stuff. Mm -hmm. And punk rock changed it for me. I mean, like I said, but coming down here, mm -hmm. I, oh, my God, country music, just not my cup of tea. But I saw some band. I, yeah, I saw Allman Brothers and uh, Greg Allman. Uh, and Dickie Betts played at my place uh, different nights. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you had to, I think, well, I think Zeppelin, uh, I mean, uh, Leonard Skinner was already passed away. The, the Ronnie and those guys passed away in what, 77? So yeah, but you had to listen to that music. ZZ Top, dude. I mean, come on. Mm. One of the best bands of all time. I, other than you name me one three piece, okay, The Police who I saw at CBGB's when they were 20 years old sure. and I was 17. Well, a little bit, maybe a little bit older than 20 years old. <laughs> yeah. See, I saw, I saw Sting in a play on Broadway. It was a play about uh, shipping things, something about boats. I don't even remember. But I, I walked out in the hallway and they're standing there. And I, my sister is like, older than me and she's in love with him she thinks he's very attractive my sister's 77 years old and she's like did you know him i go i'm gonna walk up to him and i'm gonna say something to him and i guarantee you he will laugh she goes okay so she's standing behind me i said hi um mr sting <laughs> i saw you on uh, uh, june uh, 11th uh, uh, 1978 CBGB's? Yes, you were there. Yes, I was like 17 years old. There. I go, can you please tell my sister, you know, say hi, Anna Marie? He goes, turns around, hi, Anna Marie, it's so nice to meet you. My sister's like, you know him? I like, don't know him, no. <laughs> I went to a punk rock show that he played at. <laughs> I mean, think about the other bands, like the Dead Boys, dude. Yeah. They were a great band. Unbelievable Absolutely. great band. Absolutely. Um, you know, Iggy. And I didn't get to see, you know, um, I mean, I saw Lou Reed later on, but I didn't go to like Massachusetts, Kansas City. I was too young for that stuff. Mm. But uh, New York Dolls, one of my favorite bands. Where'd you see you them at CB's? What? Did you see them at CB's? Uh, not playing. Okay. In the crowd. Okay. Iggy too. Iggy too, definitely. Oh, nice. Blondie. Blondie had a crush on Debbie Harry, still do. She's in her 70s, and I still think she's <laughs> sure one of my favorite bands. Uh, uh, you have to remember, I mean, uh, what was the other theater? Sunrise, Sunrise uh, yeah. Theater. So we Absolutely. got to see Success and um, the I saw the Clash there. I saw the Go Go's, the yeah. Bangles, the Bangles, Cindy Lauper, you know, MTV. Say what you want about it. It changed my life. I mean, mm. I remember not having it down here and going up to my brother's house in New Jersey 
and mm. sitting in front of it at the TV for 24 hours going, this is amazing. Yeah. Did you have a favorite music video back then? Oh God, the cars. Which song? Oh, you might think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. I'm kind of dating myself, dude. God. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah uh, I remembered. I remember the first one. What was the video? Kill the radio star. Buggles. Buggles. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the first one that ever played. Right. Yeah. Wow. Um, 82, yeah, I think it, that was 82. God, 82, Eight, right? 81, yeah. 82 is around that time. Yeah. 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 Um, even like George Thorogood, dude, mm. you know, mm. <laughs> Hall and Oates, one of my favorite bands. Did you see them play uh, together? Unbelievable band. Just great. Have you seen, yeah. Did, did you have see? A, you're from New Jersey. You have to like Springsteen. You don't have to like Bon Jovi, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm assuming you've seen Springsteen at least once. Uh, probably about 12 times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a story. <laughs> I was at the carefree theater one night mm -hmm. and they did a jazz show and Clarence Clemens is playing. Okay. And he asked me if I could book him and I booked him a couple times. It didn't work out, but I had Clarence Clemens play and that meant something to me. And yeah. I booked him, I booked a show, a, a new year's show with him and, uh, he was really good. Really? Yeah. Good. How did you kind of balance that out? Because I know obviously there's business, but then also you're a big fan of these of some of these people too. How did you kind of balance out the fan in you and the business? See, that's a great question. You have to not. You can't do that because if you, it's like if you big gamble on something. If you bet with your heart, because I I love the Saints or I love the Giants, the Yankees or whatever. I bet with my heart, you lose every time. If you do the same thing with a show. Sometimes you luck out and sometimes you don't. Um, I, you know, I, I booked a room full of blues. One of my favorite bands, maybe I had 45 paid at the door and I probably ate to the tune of a thousand dollars. What band was that? Room full of blues. Oh, room full uh, of blues. They're you know, straight up blues, kind of swingy blues. Gotcha. Um, the proclaimers, uh, I ate it hard on that one. I think you remember the ones that you lose and you remember the ones that you really did well. Like when I booked, uh, I booked this, this kid, Sean Costello, and he was a blues kid, and it, but he was like swingy blues stuff, like um, dancing. And he ended up, he had his girlfriend at the time was Susan Tedeschi from now Tedeschi and Trucks. And they just like, I don't know, 300 people showed up. I didn't know who the hell they were. And next time they played, she was with Derek. Yeah, I had a room full of people. Mm -hmm. But you don't always know. I mean, it, 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 I talked to Rodney from Respectables about this sort of stuff. And you say, what do you know what to do? He goes, you don't. You don't know what to do. You got to take a shot. <laughs> of course, if it's a really famous band, you'd like to think that people are going to show up for... Jello Biafra or uh, Reverend Horton Heat or whatever, but what happens if it rains or if it's, uh, right. you know, I had a couple hurricane stories too, where the roof was leaking. Oh Lord. Tom, Tom, Morello, Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine was playing the night before, came back the next night and literally the roof was leaking. So I just shut down and he and I sat there for about three hours drinking bourbon talking about what we're talking about right now. Those are the nights that, <laughs> yeah. are, the nights that are funny. When uh, Rizzo and, and, and Jizza from, from Wu-Tang Wu yeah. ended up walking in one night because they did a show the night before and they ended up sitting there going through CDs and vinyl with me behind a DJ wow. for hours. That's, that's cool. the stuff that makes B.B. King walking in and walking up on stage. That's cool stuff. Yeah, and you, stuff you being a you being a real blues guy too, what was that like for you having just being in the presence of someone like a BB King? Uh, uh, indescribable. <laughs> I, I'm, spe I'm still speechless that I sat there 
and you know he didn't drink he does, you know so we I, I went and got him a cup of coffee and we sat mm-hmm. there and just talked and he's and, and he, like just really nice really like friendly and and meant something to him that this white kid from New York from New Jersey is doing a blues club in the middle of friggin' West Palm Beach Florida mm-hmm. that meant something yeah. You know, he did Sunfest and then he came down and hung out with me. Patty wow. LaBelle, a uh, Patty LaBelle came in. Uh, people wow. like that, like you don't expect that. Yeah. And, it's just, and uh, Kim Wilson from the Fabulous Thunderbird, stuff like that. They just walk in and you have a blues band on, they jump up on stage. That doesn't happen. Right. You can't plan that. That's not something you, well, I guess you could, but. <laughs> it's not and that's so nice to hear because so often you know you get a chance to finally meet your heroes and it doesn't always turn out to be such a positive experience either no no i i, I got to meet you know the rolling stones through my ex-wife and other than mick jagger they were all really nice mick jagger was just an asshole and <laughs> I, I had no other way of saying it and, but you know I, I guess if you're that famous i don't see that's that's another thing yeah. How do you, you just be nice. I mean, I'm, I'm a jerk behind the bar. I'm still working a bar. I work Harry's three nights a week. It's a persona. It's like you're on stage behind a bar. I can't let my guard down because if I do, people take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. I guess it's got to be the same way with you. When you're famous, it doesn't really hurt you to be nice. But I can understand sometimes where it must get overwhelming. Sure. I mean, I've never been in that particular situation, but I, but I mean, I, I, I guess it's got to be overwhelming when, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of people know who you are, millions of people know who you are. It's got to be overwhelming. Yeah. But yeah, I, don't. I mean, what do you think? You, you think that there's, are there are any bands nowadays? See, this is what worries me. Now we're going to get into philosophical ray thinking. Okay. All right. Sure. What, who is going to do this now? You're going to do it. I mean, are you going to do a punk rock band? Are you no. going to do a punk rock show? You're going to go no. to show. Sure. But who's <laughs> going to keep this alive? Yeah. And the blue, I can tell you the blues and jazz guys that I knew, they talked the same way. They were like, this is a dyno. New Orleans is the only place I know that it's a way of their life, you know? We don't have that. Punk rock doesn't have that. What's gonna happen? It's just gonna fade away, right? I don't know. I mean, I think there'll always will be a thing as long as there are, you know, kids and stuff like that. And and, and then, you know, my generation and stuff like that. I think there'll always will be somebody who is takes an interest at uh, putting out the music, whether it's through labels or whether it's through venues and that sort of thing. But uh, I think right now is a really just rocky time in general, you know, considering with COVID and stuff like that, it really did a number on a lot of venues and stuff. And I'm sure that impacted you a great deal too, because you've been involved in working in live music and and, 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 and that sort of thing for quite a, for quite a long time. Right. Yeah, and, and then uh, Rodney from Respectables opened up Voltaire in uh, 2017, and I was doing a Sunday Night Blues night. Yeah. But I also did other bands like uh, my friends from uh, Spread the Dub. You know them. Um, they're, they're, I guess, what, what do you call them? Ska? Punk? They were kids going to raise. And yeah, I mean, it, it worked. And then the, the whole thing went down. I mean, my bar was closed for seven months. I, I lost, I know a lot of people had passed away that used to be regulars at my bar. Yeah. It's, scary, it's scary. But the other thing is, do you, I mean, I just don't know. I think Respectables will stay until Rodney doesn't want to do it anymore when he finally gets into his 70s and 80s. You know, I, I, do you still want to own a punk? Do you still want to own an alternative nightclub? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I know Hilly did it at CBGB's until he was almost dead. He hated it too, by the way. Sure. He absolutely hated it. He, you know what that, what umfug, you know, other forms of modern underground music. Yeah, that he was. He wanted to do like country punk and not even country. Country is what he wanted. Wanted to do. Okay. And 
I mean, can you imagine 1974, 75, 76, the, you know, Ramones walk into your bar and say, hey, man, you know, we suck, but can we play your club? Sure, play from the door. <laughs> that is what changed my life, really. And that would really, what, I mean, I, I wouldn't have done it. I don't think I went into it thinking, okay, I'm going to open up a punk rock club. I never thought that way. I, I just wanted to, to do music and it didn't really matter to me what it was. Yeah. If it was, if it was ska, if it was jazz, I mean, I wanted it to be more of a blues club. That's why I call it Raise Downtown Blues. But it was also like a joke. Hey, we're going to Raise Downtown. Yeah. <laughs> do they play blues there? Well, yeah, they do, but they also do punk rock and ska and whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know if it would work nowadays. Yeah. That's the ironic part for me because back then I wasn't listening to jazz or blues or any of that stuff. Later on, as I grew older and got a chance to get exposed to that kind of music, I certainly love it now. But that's the irony is back then it never dawned on me, at least not once that I ever think, oh, race downtown blues. <laughs> it just... It just right. never dawned. I thought I thought it was just the name, and like, I I remember seeing the the paintings and stuff in there. But I you know I just assumed that whoever did the art may have been a fan of blues. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was me. I mean, that, that, <laughs> right. that, that me. Yeah. How did you get into art? Like you know, did you did you go to school for that? Like how did you get involved with uh you know you know because those are really nice pieces. Yeah, I uh, I went to. Um... Palm Beach Junior College and um, uh, FAU. Okay. And uh, I took art, but I was I, I was a business, I guess, business major, art minor or whatever, but I ended up getting a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. I, I don't know what kind of degree you need to be a punk rock uh, blues club owner, <laughs> but whatever it was, it's School of Hard Knots, that, that I definitely yeah. don't. There you go. You know, there was a lot of that going on down there, and that was really always wonderful to see, you know, especially. Yeah. Is. You know what? I just remembered one show that I that I probably wish never happened, Leftover Crack. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. I, I, I remember seeing the flyer. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go to that one. That was, uh, <laughs> that was not a good night. I don't I don't recall. I don't I don't remember all of it, but I remember it was not a good night. Um yeah, you know that I don't like I said I don't think anybody really got hurt other than a broken arm or a black eye. Yeah. But heat, you know, heat exhaustion definitely. <laughs> what do you so ended the uh you know the okay, well I, let, let, uh, money mm. um rent went from you know 1500 to 15,000, <laughs> uh, you know, the mayor at the time was not happy with me. Um, you know, why are there 300 kids standing out on your, in front of your place at four o'clock in the afternoon? Cause they're getting ready to go into my bar that opens at five, you know? Yeah. And if Rodney still has the deals with that, Sometimes, I mean, we just did a, uh, a Halloween party. I went up and I sang with one of the bands. And he's like, come on, come, come sing a song with me. And so I go up and I sing KKK. And I'm thinking to myself, this is like so deja vu. You know, it, 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 where does it go, though? I mean, that's the, <laughs> uh, that really does bother me. Where does it yeah. go? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Kind of get emotional about it because I'm like doing yeah. this brings back it, the importance of it. I really Absolutely. think I really think that people need that. I, I, if I t if I tell if I don't have kids, I don't know if you do, but I, I don't have I do. children. I have I have a little. I got this. I got a little dog. <laughs> and I think all those kids were kind of like my kids in a weird, messed up, crazy uncle kind of way. Yeah. I taught them, them, gave them something that they didn't have. And that really means something to me. Yeah. And I think I know it really means a lot to them too. Absolutely. 
you know, and especially looking back on some of the flyers. I've... <laughs> yeah, uh, I think most of it's the bluesy stuff. Okay. You know, but um, hold on. Let me see. I, I, I know I have something. Uh, see, let me see. What is this? Uh, making you dig out the. Uh, yeah, you're making me here. dig out. Stuff, uh, yeah. This is, they tented the building. This is 1994. Oh, wow. Um, here, articles. Oh, about, yeah, there we go. That's great. Um, yeah, Billy C. Wirtz, uh, great. Joanna Connor. Yeah. There you go. Look, I had hair. <laughs> <laughs> Being on stage with bands, look at that. <laughs> at what age did you start losing your hair? Oh God, twenty-four. <laughs> oh so. wow, your dad? He was a tough one. There he is. Uh, that is the Copacabana. You couldn't wow. get more Italian looking than that, dude. Yeah, oh, my mom, it was beautiful. Um, nineteen sixty-two. So I was a year old. Wow. Uh, my dad was a um, ex-cop. Uh, Italian, uh, you know, but, you know, my brother and sister are a lot older than me. My sister's 18, 17 years older than me. I think my brother's 13 years older than me. They oh, wow. Tell you, they, they could tell you some horror stories, I'm sure. But um, I don't know. I, I He also played in a marching band and, and, uh, and played like Sinatra and stuff like that, dude. I mean, he was... Very talented. And I, yeah. I guess maybe that's where I got, because I remember him telling me, don't listen. Oh, wow. That dude, you know, Coltrane. Yeah. I never thought that he even knew who that was. Yeah. I was going to, I was asking, you know, did you, did you know, like he was listening to that type of jazz or? I knew he listened to like, you're from Hoboken. Everybody would say, oh, Sinatra. And, and, and I know he knew him, but he listened to other local guys from, from mm -hmm. New Jersey, uh, a guy by the name of Jimmy Roselli, um, mm -hmm. so Stuarty, uh, oh, um, uh, geez, even Bing Crosby, you know, that sort of stuff sure. he listened to. And I still have some of his albums that, you know, when he passed away, my dad died. He was 68. My mom lived to be in her 80s. So, yeah, I, I, I have to credit my brother, I think, more than anybody, because he turned me on to shit. You know, like I said, the Ramones. And shit. Yeah, the punk. How did but he not even, I, don't yeah. even think, I don't think he even knew what the hell they were. I don't really think he did. <laughs> sure. And hear that. And I don't even know what possessed him to take me there. Yeah. I do not know. Maybe it was because we were downtown. We were we were in, in the village, and we went to an Italian dinner after Zeppelin. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> Listening to, did she like some of the same stuff your dad liked? More on like the the pop vocal kind of side of things. Yeah, I don't really remember. I mean, do you remember those old kind of um, stereos that look like a coffin that had like oh a yeah track or. Um, uh, Boots Randolph or somebody like, you know, jazzy, but like poppy stuff. Poppy, oh, sure. My sister-in-law definitely was a big Elvis fan. So we had that too. Okay. Um, but I mean, I can remember Dan. Remember that stuff? <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, you got to, whatever, you, you did that. But um, I don't know if they, I don't really remember them having like, yes, he, I, I do on Sundays, my father playing mostly Italian or uh, uh, I don't know, but then they really weren't, you know, they were too old to be into rock and roll. My sure. father was a cop in Hoboken and he told me like his worst experience with dealing with kids and screaming 1956, 57 or something like that. Can you imagine that? That's okay. gotta be my, I mean, I, I, I couldn't even imagine what that was like. No. I, I went to Graceland. You ever go to Graceland? No, I've never been. You should just, even if you're not a big Elvis fan. I like you Elvis. Just gotta go. Yeah, I like Elvis. Just see the cars alone. The cars yeah. is like, 
the best part. But to walk through his house where he lived, ridiculous. Yeah. Just, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Danzig earlier. Did you have you heard Danzig's uh, cover record of Elvis? Oh God, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> you, <and> <laughs> I was going to ask you, what do you think? But I don't know. That, that may sum it up right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the funniest thing I heard about dancing was I went to what was, what was it? I went to the store today. I bought some kitty litter today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape those memes of him with the litter I know, and right? of others and I t- I have no problem with Glenn Danzig. I kind of liked him. I, I really liked Rollins. I love Rollins. Mm. I mean, you know, obviously he was not the first singer from Black Flag, but I just, I, and, and, and to me, Dead Kennedy's Jello Biafra, dude. I mean, just that voice, just so horrifically bad. I mean, think about Joey Ramone's voice. He literally tried to sing like Mick Jagger. I mean, he, that's what he, tr- he tried to do a fake English accent with his Brooklyn, you know, accent. How the fuck is, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. How, how is that even possible? Yeah. How is that possible? Why yeah. did that work? Exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else? So I kind of want to go into some like random questions, but let's just just throw some random things at you and let me know kind of what comes to mind and what, what you remember and what your opinions are on these topics. All right. So out of all, yeah, it could be. (laughs) So out of all the blues artists, because you are a, a blues guy, who do you think is the most underrated blues artist of all time? Oh, Well, Buddy Guy, mm. Buddy Guy, and now it is in his 80s. There's a documentary on him. When he started out in the 50s, he, he like, he, he played uh, uh, for lunch, for like uh, Muddy Waters bought him lunch. You know, that starting from th- that sort of stuff is mm. what I can't comprehend. Um, that you're so broke, you're so poor, you leave the South, you go to Chicago, you can't make a living there either. You're working as a soda jerk or whatever at the time, you know? And then you're, that's thing, you know, I mean, he's opening for the Rolling Stones and, you know, I, I, that story, if you could watch that documentary, I think yeah. Junior Wells too, who played with Buddy for a long time. Mm. I play harmonica. I, I, I'm not in anywhere close to that kind of caliber, but I learned a lot from those guys. Their early albums, uh, just down rootsy, get you into here, get into just yeah. stuff, make you, make you think about what they went through. And there's a rat in my, look, I'll give you a line. There's a rat in my house, and that mf only has two legs. What does that mean to you? That that some dude is banging your girl on the side. Yeah, man, that that's the sort of stuff that got me. Yeah. <laughs> B.B. King. <laughs> you see that? Uh, to me, B.B. King. Um, what was the song? Uh, How Blue Can You Get hmm. is the line. Yeah. Uh, here we go. I bought you a ten dollar dinner, and you said thanks for the snack. You gave me seven children, and now you want to give them back. That's the sort of stuff that means something to me. Go ahead. What else? That's great. So you're obviously uh, a bartender as well. So uh, what's your? I'm a, ter- fi- I'm a terrible bartender. I am. Mm-hmm. I'm horrifically bad. <laughs> Uh, my girlfriend is a fantastic, what they call mixology. I saw her make a thousand drinks last night at a bar. Oh, nice. Literally. You know, like, I've been doing it for so long. What else am I going to do? What's the craziest you know, like, drink? That's, so- story. that's another <laughs> great story. What do you, you know, when you grow up, what do you want to be, Ray? <laughs> yeah. Dead? Uh, am I going to make it? Yeah. I, I would. <laughs> I would. I, I, I did. I was so. Drinking, my father had a bar in the house at nine years old. I remember wearing a little red vest and serving his friends um, 
Singapore slings or some mixed drink, you know, rock and rye or whatever. Yeah. What was your favorite, most memorable Florida band that you had a chance to see live? Well, we talked about it a little bit, right? So Gigolo Big. Um, uh, help me. A 15-year-old kid in love with Stevie Ray Vaughan. I saw him at Cheers down in Lauderdale with okay. Derek Trucks, who was also 15 years old. They were two stages. One played on one side and one played on the other. I was, these kids are into it. I don't know. Um, some of the, like a lot of the ska stuff, the worms yeah. were great. I mean, you had 15 kids on stage or 12 kids on stage at one time. That's pretty wild. Yeah, they were wild. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. And what was your favorite band when you were growing up? Ooh, were you wow. 16 years old. Yeah. Take and that sort of stuff. You were into that? Yeah, they, they were more like they would come down to South Florida. But, I, and, you know, speaking of like the local scene, I, what was going on around at that time? Triple A, because Triple A against all authority. AAA they were older. They were older. They were. Yeah, they were. They were, though. I mean, they were a punk band, but they had like horns and everything like Radio Baghdad was another one that I would love to go see. They were from South Florida. Uh, would love to go see them any chance that I had. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's probably a, a good, a, a good amount of the band uh, morning again, a more on the, the hardcore metal kind of, kind of, kind of sound uh, to, to a degree. But uh, I think we were quite blessed to have such a great scene in the nineties, especially the late nineties, early two thousands down there. I think so. Uh, so. I mean, I, like I said, I walked into propaganda last night and obviously I'm like the oldest dude in the room, yeah. but you know, the, the owner is Matt and Matt used to play. <laughs> right. uh, well, he's, his band now is what? No name Scott band, right? I think that's his band now. I do know of them. Yeah. They're pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's like his them. band. But yeah. there's was another band. Uh, do you remember the come ons? Yes. Yeah. They yeah, used to yeah. sing remote. Yankees. It was one of, I could have swore I saw them in Palm Beach at some point too, but they were from like Daytona, I think, like that area. Young and Useless. That was the band I Young was and Useless. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to remember that. Yeah. That's Gordy. Were Gordy. you, were you, I think also at Groove Nicks and Nonpoint and those types. I love uh, Groove Nicks played Rays several times I, mm -hmm. and Nonpoint too. I love the Groove Nicks. I really like, I, I they played uh, Respectables a couple of years ago, mm. and um, the lead singer I walked up to him. He's got you gave us something, Ray. You did, nobody, where the hell else could we play? And it's I, I don't know. It, it's yeah. it gets redundant. It does get redundant to me after a while, and I don't like talking about it. But people will say they use they throw that word around that word that L word that I hate more than love and anything mm. else. And I don't think I abused that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think I tried to make it where everybody got something out of it. Yeah. At least I hope so. Absolutely. And you brought a variety, I mean, a lot of different sound and music for all types of. Good job. Rodney does a great job with what mm -hmm. he does. I mean, Rodney, you know, respectable still yeah. is, is, is having shows that, that I can't believe that Zymox is going to play there again. And uh, yeah. who do you have last week? Oh, Amigo the Devil. They're like amazing band. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. Real, I don't even know what you call their music. Uh, Jim them at the Culture Room one time. They were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, what else is out there? I just, I, I can't listen to, I would rather listen to disco. You know, well, like I said, Hall and Oats or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what you call it. Is it pop? Is it pop? I mean, I think after Green Day and, and Blink-182, there's no pop punk bands anymore. And I still like them and I give them a lot of credit. Yeah. Well, there's um, one band that's still going on that's from South Florida, Newfound Glory. Did you, I mean, did you? Oh, but they played at Ray's. Um, 
when he was dating with Avril Lavigne or whatever her name was, the lead singer was dating yeah. her. I think, yeah. So, yeah. I vaguely yeah. remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but, but Newfound Glory. I mean, do, do you have a re- That's right. Yeah. That's yeah, they're right. still good. I think I think they're just putting out a new record, like a Christmas record, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> That's uh, great. Yeah, so they're still doing their thing on. And I, I went to high school many years ago with a few of the members. They were, I think, a grade above me. Uh, I did a uh, I did a Sweet Sixteen birthday party. Parents nice. were like from you know rich kid from Wellington, and uh, I probably paid them like a thousand dollars to do an hour and a half set. There you go. I didn't. Pay, I didn't even pay them. I didn't pay them that night. There was no cover. It was just a birthday party. Wow. I don't even remember how I even remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Including Rays. But if there was, uh, not to say that would be your pick, but it could be. Uh, but if there was one venue that from Florida that you just, you miss, you wish could come back for one night of, of show. Uh, what? Uh, I think we saw uh, uh, Sisters of Mercy or some band, some goth band like that there. Oh, no, okay. no, not Sisters of Mercy. Um, Peter, the big, tall Bow- dude. Bauhaus? Oh, what? Bauhaus? Not Bauhaus. That's Peter Murphy. Uh, that's, why I, that's why I thought you were going with it, Peter Murphy. Oh, uh, P- Peter. Uh, damn it. Do you remember Foundation Mm-mm. in West in West Palm? Before what? Ray's. The yeah, Kiki, definitely the Kiki Lounge. I told you earlier, um, I saw a band there called Truke of America. They, that was like a Weird Al kind of cover yeah. band. Funny and hilarious. They would do like press on. Oh, just hilarious stuff. They, they put out one album. I, I have their I have their only album. I have it too. Yeah. I have it. You have it with the I TV do. screen on it. Right? I do. Yeah, I do have it. Yeah, that was our only one. And I. Yeah, that area. Yeah, yeah. Mark, the bass player, ended up playing with a band at Ray's called um, Misbehaving, Misbehaving Band, and I remember telling him, "Like you're making me do now." I did. To- <laughs> 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 Give me the hundred dollars that you had on you know me for playing for three hours. I, you see, that's another thing. How do these bands even survive? On those punk bands, most of them played for the door, paid the headliners, but the opening acts, they didn't get anything, right? Yeah. They, yeah. 50 bucks? Peanuts. Yeah, sure. Bring their gear. I can remember doing Battle of the Bands on a Saturday from 11 o'clock in the morning on stage. Me doing the sound. Why did I do that? I have to have my head examined. But because it, 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 it was fun. Yeah. It was different. I mean, how much of that for hundreds of thousands of dollars? Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I'd probably still do it again. Were you at this point in my life? No, you gotta remember, I was 37 yeah. years old sure. when I opened Rays, right? Well, not even 30, 30, 33. No, sorry for my <laughs> vulgar language. I <laughs> know it couldn't. I yeah. saw last night just watching the two bands that I sat through for like mm-hmm. 45 minutes, the screaming. I love the music though, I love the double kick drum, bass drum, the distorted guitar yeah it's not, it's not me but i guess it's the, it, there were people there so it's got to have some of kind of a throwing sure yeah there's something for everybody out there you know <laughs> so but you know yeah. the, the thing i always found ironic about you know some of that music too is when you start to talk to some of the band members especially the drummers you know they usually are uh, someone in the band usually is into jazz of some sort, you know, and it's a dude, you know how many kids would play in punk rock bands at Ray's and would go to Dreyfus or some of the other music schools, art schools. Mm-hmm. Dude, one of them, this kid Jeff, is now the conductor for the Palm Beach Orchestra. 
Oh, wow. And he played in a punk rock band. It's horrible. Terrible punk rock band. But you know what? Look at him now. So, yeah. yeah I, I mean, really, other than, than the big cities like, you know, L.A., New York, New Orleans, there's no jazz clubs. There's none of that anymore. Yeah. It just doesn't work. But thankfully, there's people like you and me that hopefully will pass it on to our kids. Well, not me, but, you know, like my family. And <laughs> sure. yeah, I mean, I, I know I, I could talk jazz with you. Ask me who I wish I had seen. I saw Sinatra. I was very lucky. I got to see Sinatra eh, with Dean Martin and Liza Minnelli. Nice. Um, Nina Simone. Nina Simone, I think I probably would cry. Just watching her documentary, um, to see her or, I got to see Aretha Franklin, um, Ray Charles, mm. uh, Coltrane. I saw Miles only, I, I, I saw Prince, okay? And Miles walked on stage in Miami for one song. He did Purple Rain. Wow. Wow, with Miles? Yeah, Miles walked on stage. Like, I didn't know who the hell Miles Davis. I mean, I knew who he was, but I didn't. Have, I had, you know, my father had his albums, but I sure as hell didn't think he was. I love Prince. Sure. Like, to me, Hendrix, I would have really. Uh, Jim Morrison and the Doors, definitely. I mean, I got to see the Doors with Ian Asbury from the cult uh, at Sun, Sunfest. Nice. But I mean, see, I don't know. If Zeppelin, you had, yeah. Zeppelin was pretty wild. Zeppelin was wild, dude. I bet. Being 15 years old and seeing Zeppelin. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And then later seeing the Ramones. I mean, that's just. Yeah. The same night. That doesn't happen. <laughs> <But> it, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> I didn't know that my, even could happen. It explains all my. It explains a lot. Yeah. In your opinion, greatest jazz label of all time? Blue Note. My brother was a chiropractor, mm -hmm. and um, his uh, one of his patients was Rudy Van Gelder. And Van Gelder Studios, where everything was recorded, dude. That's a legend. That's a legend right there. Okay, and I <laughs> met him, and I was like. He's a little old Jewish dude. Yeah. Like, you know, like, how the hell does he even know what that is? Yeah. Chess records, dude. Yeah. You know, some of that stuff. Can you imagine? No. I, I, <laughs> no, I can't, actually. Barry or Howlin' Wolf? Yeah. 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 I got to, I, I mean, I was lucky. I got to see some of it. I saw John Lee Hooker. That was life-changing for me. Just hearing him talk was right. life changing. Oh, you really talk like that. That's how we talk. And that sort of stuff. BB meeting BB King, just having a conversation with BB King. Yeah. About like you and I are talking right now, literally talking about Chatting. he couldn't. We're talking in the in the nineties. He couldn't comprehend uh, Katy Perry or whatever the hell was uh, you know Britney Spears. <laughs> like mind boggling to him. Why are they listening? What are they listening to this shit for? I said, I, I don't know, baby. I would really, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, you'll, you'll always have some, you know, pop bubblegum music that exists and uh, that, uh, you know. But I guess Elvis was enjoy. popping bubblegum too. The Beatles were popping bubblegum, right? Sure. But then you had other, you had other groups too, like the Partridge family and. Oh God. And that type stuff too. Monkeys which was a put together band, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, I guess we need that. We do, yeah, you do, yeah. You'll, I mean, you... I, I, hate to, I hate to say it, I really find Adele's vocals amazing. And I know she's been around for a while, but I, I would listen to, I have her CD, I would listen to that. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not my real, but it, I have to respect it. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I don't know. Do you kind of classify that type stuff as more like a guilty pleasure of yours? Or are you pretty out in the open and say, oh, yeah, I'm really into that? Take that off with the podcast. I don't <laughs> want to. I have posters of Adele on my wall, dude. 
<laughs> Let's see those. Where where are they? <laughs> you may have a painting that you did too. You never know. <laughs> no, no, no not yet. <laughs> no. What else? <laughs> we did an hour and a half, man. We did. I have I have two more questions. Uh, sure. this, que this question here is, you know, obviously you had booked a lot of artists and stuff, bands that came to play at your venue. Uh, if there was that one that was so close, but it just didn't happen, uh, who would that be? Who? Yeah. Who would it have been? Yeah. You were close, you know, it, it was, it was definitely in the works or maybe you were talking. I had an opportunity to book Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros. Mm -hmm. And I turned it down because he wanted like $3,000 on a Sunday night. And like an asshole, <laughs> I turned that down. Uh, Morphine, I, I could have booked Morphine. They played at, um, and that's another band. See that, see that you asked me what music I love. I love stuff that's so different that you yeah. can't even, like they have a saxophone player that plays a berry and a baritone and, 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 and two two saxes and one arm mixer two different hands like Rashawn Roland Kirk kind of crazy shit yeah and a, and a upright cocktail drummer and a bass player that plays a, a G guitar string and a G bass string slide at the same time that to me I would have if I had, was able to book morphine yeah that was definitely and Joe Strummer just yeah. added the, the, the whole just and then he died right after that at 50, you know? Why did the Ramones, none of them make it to 60 or 70 years old? I'm older than, the, than most of the Ramones, except for Marky. How is that possible? They must have did a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, I think. A yeah. lot. I remember talking to Joey and eating pizza at Ray's Pizza. It was called Ray's Pizza. <laughs> there you go. It was not my place, but it was <laughs> no. Ray's. I mean, it could have been, right? Who who would argue with you? <laughs> buying a slice of pizza for Joey Ramon. Yes. What did he have on his pizza? Probably pepperoni. I okay. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I, yeah. I know I just got cheese. I mean, I, I would expect that you know your pizza considering you're a, you know. Oh, God, you want to talk Jersey about pizza? See now, see now we have a problem. <laughs> you want to get into stuff like this? Now this could be another <laughs> hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't have in florida and then and, and and when you're from new jersey or even new orleans where i lived there for a while pizza and chinese food mm. you cannot it's growing up in the village and going to little italy and chinatown after a ramon show or after seeing blondie or whatever Jane's Addiction, another one of my favorite mm. bands. Yeah. I saw them at at the Garden, at Madison Square Garden. Uh, I think Happy Mondays opened for them. Remember that band? Okay. Happy yeah, Mondays? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They opened, and then we went to Spumoni Gardens, L and B, in Brooklyn. They don't have regular slices of pizza. They have, they don't have Sicilian. Mm. It is just some amalgamation of stuff. I don't even know what you call it. It's just <laughs> this big piece of mm. deliciousness. The sauce. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Now I gotta go get <laughs> I agree. <laughs> nice. And the last question I wanted to ask is. And I had a pizza place next to Ray's. Do you remember the pizza place? I, I do. Yes. Yeah. And do. that guy, Albert, now owns a place up in Palm Beach Gardens. About two weeks ago, I went there and we were talking like you and I are talking. Yeah. He's like, I can't believe you even survived that stuff. I go, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe it either. Yeah. Go ahead. One more question. Last question. So if you had to kind of summarize your, your life. With, oh, with one song, what song would, would be that one <laughs> speak your life, Ray? <laughs> um, wow. I know. See, and now, and now I'm going to be like Nights Like These by Lucero. Nights Like <laughs> Newer, okay. 
you know, they played at Rays in, in 2001. Yeah. I, I mean, I could easily say my way, but more by Sid Vicious <laughs> than by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I think is funny. <laughs> uh, but nights like these, and I'll quote the line, it's nights like these that make me sleep all day. That's it. I mean, you get home at three in the morning. I'm still doing it. I'm 60 years old and yeah. I'm still working till three in the morning and not falling asleep until five and sleeping till two o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. <laughs> yes. I guess that's it. I mean, it's like these. And when, and I saw Lucero a couple years back and there was a, a hurricane. We we're, were in Memphis mm. and they played at this theater called, um, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, it hell's about 1500 and it's like outdoor theater outdoor amphitheater it's pouring ass raining i mean like torrential rain and i see ben the lead singer and he's like what am i gonna do what am i gonna do i'm like what are you gonna do you're gonna get your gear you're gonna go on stage you're gonna mic up everything that you could possibly well, there's only eight there's only a 16 channel board i'll make it work but you, we'll we'll put we'll hang mics over the the, the the saxophone and the trumpet mm. player. We got this. I go, it's nice like these, man. He goes, I know, it's nice like these. And he comes out and he says, my my friend said, get your ass on stage. It's nice like these, asshole. <laughs> that's, the, that's what he said. My girlfriend looked at me. She goes, did you really say that? I go, of course I said that. What do you think? <laughs> yes, get your ass on stage. Let's go. Buddy that's Miles, yeah. first time he played at Ray's. But he had what they referred to as narcolepsy. I think it was a drug problem, but we'll call it narcolepsy for the sake okay. of argument. Okay. Book him into the hotel room. Show's supposed to first uh, opening band, local blues band. Uh, they go on. They play like half an hour. And I, but Buddy's not there. It's 930. Buddy's not there. It's 945. Buddy's not there. It's 1015. Mm -hmm. Buddy's not there. I get in my piece of shit caddy and drive up to whatever red roof on 45th street in Riviera beach his bouncer i think i swear to god if i'm making this up strike me dead i think the guys had this tattooed on his head because he couldn't remember his name backwards which tattooed on his head harley i couldn't make that up it, what's your name harley no shit you look in the mirror okay harley <laughs> Harley, where is Buddy? He's sleeping. I throw him in my car. He gets his van. They drive there. 11 o'clock, I got 350 people literally like, where is Buddy? Where is Buddy? He walks up on stage and he said, I could, dude, get up there. Get your big fat black ass up on stage <laughs> right now. Jeez. He walks up, grabs the microphone. He says, Ray said, get my big fat black ass on stage. So here I am. <laughs> that's a good one. And there's a guy who played with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a legend too, right there. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I think that um, I still love seeing, you know, I almost went to the, the Stones are playing this week and I was mm -hmm. going to, I just can't make myself pay nine hundred dollars to go see them. I don't blame you. <laughs> I mean, That's a if, lot. If, if Led Zeppelin was still together, I mean, mm. I'm sure they'd be getting that kind of money too. Uh, sure. I have a ticket stub for the the Prince show that I told you about. Yeah. I think it was fifteen dollars. In what nineteen eighty five? Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, no, it's probably with tax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and, and the Jacksons. I remember seeing the Jacksons. Oh, wow. Springsteen. But I remember more than Springsteen. We talked about that for a second. Yeah. Let's not forget Southside Johnny. Yeah. Do you know the guy? And the, and the Asbury Jukes. Come on. And it, it's, dude, I have over, every one of his albums. I don't think anybody can even admit to having that. Um, still puts on a great show. Yeah. And he's, in, you know, I, I, my sister said, we always go to a Broadway show. And I said, there's nothing playing right. I was just up in, in June or July. It's nothing playing, but Springsteen's playing. I said, Anna Marie, I am not paying $900 to see him do what I just did for an hour and a half talk about my life. His life is probably more important, <laughs> but not $900 worth. No. 
<laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I don't know how um, the how does that even work? Yeah. How do you you know? All right. I think Ted's getting ready to go outside. Yep. All right. Sounds great. I, it was so it, wonderful. It, it made me really from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this.